The final event on the Sunshine Tour Sun International Series took the players to KwaZulu-Natal for the Sibaya Challenge. Vibrant, energetic Durban is the sports capital of the province. With its world-class stadiums and facilities, it was to the liking of Jake Redman. I've always loved Durban. Eh? I don't think you'll find a place better in, in South Africa weather-wise in April, May, June. I don't think you can beat, uh, beat Durban in, in winter. So I love the weather, yeah. I think it's awesome. I don't mind a bit of wind. I'm used to a bit of wind. And there's lots to do. There's lots of good golf courses. So yeah, I've, I've always enjoyed Durban. I love a bit of curry as well, so that also helps. The Mount Edgecombe Country Club is tucked between the hills behind Mshlonga Rocks. It has two championship courses with a parklands layout of the woods course as the choice to test the golfers in the Sibaya Challenge. I haven't played this course for years. I can't even remember this golf course. I think it was last time in 99 or 2000. That's the last time I've been here. But uh, the weather's good. Uh, they just say the wind's going to blow. They've done hard work. The course looks good. The greens are what, done well. They redid their greens last year, and I think it's paid massive dividends. I couldn't believe how beautifully the greens were rolling. They got a certain uh, firmness to them as well. And you know, obviously, if you hit a good putt, it goes in, so it's really nice. Originally designed by Sid Bruce in 1935, it stood the test of time superbly. Brayton Mayer began the tournament well. Two birdies in the first three holes. At the par 5 14th, this well-weighted chip gave Brayton a shot at a fourth birdie of the round. He duly sunk the putt to move to four under. I don't have many expectations coming into this week. I've missed four or five cuts in a row now. I've lost count, so but I've been working hard and I know I must just be patient and stick to what I've been working on. So it's good to see an under par round for a change. So yeah, so just trying to turn things around a bit and hopefully this is the week. A quality finish at 18 gave Brayton another birdie and he finished the round on three under 67. Having picked up four birdies in the first 10 holes, Louis Albertser had this for a fourth at the 14th. Nicely done, Louis. I started well and, and the putter was working through the first five holes and that gave me a little bit of confidence going through the round. I just watched the stat card now, 25 putts through the round and that's where the, where the score came from. I, I was hitting it decent but, but the putter definitely gave me the score. Louis dropped a shot at the par 4 16th to drop back to 4 under but a perfectly positioned drive at the 18th opened up the green for his approach. It's wonderful to start off well. If I can carry on putting like I'm doing it, it, it will be good. So. Oh, just take a step, uh, one step at a time. I don't try look into the future too much during the golf tournament, so just take it one shot at a time and see what happens. A birdie three at the last, and Louis Alberts had completed a fine round of five under 65. A great start for the 22-year-old from Dundee Golf Club. And that was a score match by Jean Hugo. This chip at the ninth, an illustration of his fine short game that helped him to seven birdies on his way to 65 and a share of the lead. Jake Redmond started at the 10th and burned up the inward nine with three birdies in a row from the 5th. This beauty at the 9th, his last, saw him sign for a 5 under 65. Very happy with that start. Six birdies, you know, it was really nice to, to make a 30 foot on the last and uh, get myself to 5 under. Um, yeah, obviously nice, nice, nice to start off like that and uh, hopefully we can keep the momentum going. After a relatively calm morning, the wind began picking up a little in the afternoon. 43-year-old Vaughan Grunewald had two bogeys and five birdies, including one at the 14th, after the stunning approach to give the Kingswood Golf Club Pro a round of three under 67. Luke Joy balanced out two bogeys with six birdies, including three on the trot from the fifth in his first round. The Abu Dhabi-based Englishman sank a par-saving putt from the fringe of the 12th, earning him a high five from his caddy and a 66. Fellow countryman Todd Clements brushed in a fourth birdie at the 14th on his way to joining Joy on four under par. A joyful English collaboration. CJ Duplessis was another whose touch around the green was spot on. This neat pitch set up a second birdie at the par five fifth hole for the Irene Country Club player, whose best tour result was three runners-up places in 2016. I've been playing well the last couple of tournaments, putting myself in this position every time. So um, I'm starting to get comfortable uh, playing good golf and playing among the leaders. And that was where he was at the Sabaya Challenge. After much planning, a wonderful tee shot at the par three seventh very nearly brought him the perfect result. Myself and my caddy, uh, it's one of the only shots we had a, a, a extra talk about because he wanted me to hit six iron and I ended up hitting seven iron and pitched just short of the green on, on the right line. And um, I don't know how it stayed out. Yeah, it's just a smooth seven iron into the wind. 
A tap in for birdie and CJ was on five under par with one hole to play. I had a, a really strong game plan for the course and I stuck to my game plan 100% all day. There were some tough holes that needed to be reckoned with and the, the wind was blowing. So um, I played the tough holes well and scored on the scoreable holes all day. So I'm really happy and I'm really pleased. Looking forward to tomorrow. And he could well have made it six under. His birdie effort the last had the perfect weight, but was a couple of inches offline. So a four-way tie at the top of the leaderboard after the opening round of the Sibaya Challenge. Henny Otto and Jake Ruiz joined on four under by a pair of Englishmen. Brayton Mayer and Vaughan Grunewald very much in the frame after rounds of 67. Another perler of a day in Durban for the second round of the Sabaya Challenge at Mount Edgecombe. After an opening round of 72, Doug McGuigan came charging through the field in the second round. Five birdies on his front line took him to the turn in 30, and Eagle and two more birdies had him at nine under with four to play. Two bogeys and this miss at the last for birdie saw Doug come home in 33. Nonetheless, a highly satisfying 63 and five under after two rounds for the veteran Scotsman. Luke Joy, a birdie at the 17th, the fourth of his round of 68, put the man from Dorset on six under par. He's chuffed. Two under after an opening round of 68, Louis Diacha made his move on day two. Starting at the 10th, birdies at 10, 11 and 14 had him on three under as he played his tee shot on the par four 17th. And he sank the putt for a fourth birdie. You know, the game's all about confidence. I had, a, got a, had some balls yesterday afternoon, got a good feel on the range and uh, yeah, went with a good feeling today. So felt real good out there, hit the ball very well and that helps a lot, you know, it takes a lot of pressure off of your putting. So hits a lot of greens and uh, I think that leads to not making any bogeys. Louis, whose first of three Sunshine Tour wins, came at the 2009 Suncoast Classic, birdied the par 5 third. This was his approach to the par 4 fifth. I'm going to European Tour School next week, second stage and then final stages after that. So I've been, played, been working hard for that um, peaking in that time. And it's just uh, it's a bonus to do well here, you know, obviously to try and win every week. So, but it's a big bonus playing well this week. It's just the week before the European Tour School to get now, nice confidence going into that. He did birdie the fifth and tapped in for a part the ninth to finish with a 64, eight under after two rounds. CJ Duplessis continued his rich form after his 65 and it was an eight under when he played an immaculate approach to the water guard at eighth green. He moved to nine under with another birdie. Covering up against the heat, CJ was turning up the temperature on his rivals as he lined up another birdie putt, this at the 17th. CJ's second 65 put him on 10 under and the early clubhouse leader on day two. The conditions remained similar in the afternoon with a strong breeze tugging at the trees and flagsticks. Sweet Jonathan Agrin carded a 71 in the first round. This was his tee shot at the par 3 seventh. We had 2-1 free to the flag. Wind was coming mostly from the right. Uh, it's a tough hole, so you, you're quite happy with a green and regulation there. But I hit a 5-iron, be a good shot that bounced a bit short and released onto the green and then I didn't see anything uh, but I used to hear people shouting and then I understand it was in so yeah well what can you say it comes when you least expect it. A pro since 1999 John Hughes had 12 top 20 finishes in 16 starts this year. Six under he was putting for birdie at the 14th. Oh no so close. John would make amends at the 16th to finish on seven under par. Louis Albertson now on the fourth for birdie. Come on. Oh, another just refuses to drop. Louis would join Jean on seven under after a round of 68. Henny Otto was playing super solid golf. Seven under for the tournament after 13 holes. And now eight under. He finished with a bogey free 68 to be two off the lead. Our first look at Peter Karmas. Three under after the first round, Peter was eight under playing his approach into the 18th. Excellent shot. Pin high, but he had a tricky downhill putt for birdie. Karmas is running hot with his putter. 
and another smooth stroke. He was on nine under after a round of six under 64. Brenton Mayer now. He had a perfect lie for his third shot into the par five third green. Oh, an absolute beauty. A big chance for his first birdie after a drop at the second. Played well end of last year, and then I kind of lost form coming back from Africa. I missed a lot of cuts in a row now, so I don't know. I think I maybe tried too hard, maybe trying to improve on something that wasn't really needed to get improved. Um, so I kind of sat down and went to go look at what I did well, um, what brought me the success last year, and I kind of just said, okay, I'm going to just forget about all the things I've been trying to work on and just go to back to playing golf. Keeping it simple was Brayton. He followed Agrid's line at the seventh, a metre-long putt for fifth consecutive birdie. He was on fire. The start of the day, all I was trying to do was almost make the cut because I've had such a bad run of form lately. I started with a couple of birdies early on, so I thought, you know, let's try and keep going in the right direction instead of thinking about the cut. And walking down our last hole, the ninth hole, I honestly didn't know my score. I knew I was 10, 11 or 12 under, but uh, I tried not to think about my score. And when we can play like that, just going with the process and everything, that's what we strive for. So it was fun. Um, it's more birdies than I've made in the last five or six events today, probably. So I'm pretty happy. A tap in for par at the last for Brayton for a round of nine under par 61. Ten birdies, including a streak of six on the trot and one bogey, put Brayton Meyer at the top of the leaderboard after two rounds. CJ Duplessis, back-to-back -back rounds of 65, had him two back, whilst Peter Karmas had roared into contention at nine under. A wonderful day's golf all round. Join us after the break for the final round from the Sabaya Challenge. Welcome back for the final round of the Sabaya Challenge at the sun-drenched woods course at Mount Edgecombe Country Club. The contenders were sharpening their knives on the putting green before going into the heat of the kitchen. Henny Otto was four of the pace. CJ Duplessis was just two behind the leader, who was Brayton Mayer on 12 under par. Can he keep it together for 18 holes? On the course, Brazilian Adilson de Silva, five under par. This was his chip into the third green. So close, very skillfully done by Dilson. He made the birdie to move to six under par, much to his delight. CJ Duplessis now at the first hole. Pars in the first two rounds here for CJ. Ah, but that is a definite birdie chance at the first. Wally Kutsia was enjoying his best tournament of the year. Five under par, he was standing over a birdie putt at the par five third. And he drops it. Wally moves to six under, ready to pounce should others falter. The leader, Brayton Mayer, lining up a birdie putt at the first hole. It's a seven meter putt. A confident stroke, and in she goes. 13 under for Brayton. The international challenge was being led by Luke Joy. A tricky shot at the third for Luke, but he plays a quality chip from an awkward position. A second birdie for Luke put him on eight under par. Back to CJ Duplessis at the first. This was for birdie. Yes, he read it perfectly. The young man from Irene now on 11 under par. Louis de Jager on the third green. This is a long putt for Eagle. Just stops short. Louis would tap in for birdie and move to nine under par. Very much in contention. Three pars in the first three holes. Henny Otto had a chance to end that sequence at the fourth. An uphill putt. Yes, it curls in and drops. Henny now throws his hat into the ring for his first win of the year as he goes to nine under. CJ now at the second longest hole on the course, 558 meter par five, third. A monster drive and a deadly second put him in eagle putt range. Oh, it just dies to the right. A bold attempt to go to 12 under. A tap in for birdie puts him on 11 under. The masked man is making a move. At the second of the par fives on the front nine now, the fifth, Louis de Acher for eagle. He read it well, but just didn't borrow quite enough. He birdied this hole in the opening two rounds and settles down to tap in for a birdie again. A little frustrating for Louis. 
He feels an eagle got away there. Brayton Mayer had double bogeyed the second to slip back to 11 under, but he was in birdie territory at the third. No problem, he was back on track. After birdies at one and three, Luke Joy was on eight under par, playing his second into the eighth. The pin is positioned to the right front and protected by the water. Wow, great shot, Luke. He would make birdie and go to the turn in nine under par. CJ's birdie, bogey, birdie, par start had him on 11 under as he used the favorable tailwind to fire his second at the flag at the 419 meter par four eighth. Fine shot. He was in eagle territory. Henny Otto needed to make a move. He'd made one birdie in seven holes. His second at the eighth. A great approach. But Henny would miss the birdie putt and stay at nine under. CJ Duplessis now for his eagle at the fifth. Come, come, come. Oh, not enough. He settled for a birdie to move to 12 under alongside Mayer. Joint first round leader Louis Albertson. He'd been on 10 under before a six at the par three seventh dropped him back to seven under. A birdie at 10 and very nearly another at the 11th. Still on eight under for the 22 year old from Dundee. Now, can Luke Joy move into serious contention? Putting from the fringe for a birdie at the 13th. Yes, the Englishman moves to 10 under, two off the lead. The pressure was mounting. Brayton Mayer for a birdie at the 11th. No, so he stays at 12 under with seven to play. Louis Diacha was on 10 under as he stood over this birdie putt at the par 4 13th. Oh, the stroke of a man in good form. Superb stuff. 11 under for Louis, one off the lead. Henny Otto still struggling to find the birdies. He had one in 13 holes. But he rolled this one in for a fourth at par 5 14th. That's relief for Henny, now 10 under. The 16th fairway now, and Luke Joy. No drop shots and four birdies. Moved Luke to 10 under. Oh, he couldn't have placed it better. Great shot. Every chance for a birdie from there. Also on 10 under after six birdies and three bogeys was Folly Kutsia as he stood over a short par putt at the 18th. Duly done. A classy 65 for Volley. He was the clubhouse leader on